Welcome to Mechanical Classroom. In today's lecture, we will be discussing about positive displacement pumps. Positive displacement pump moves a fixed volume of fluid within the pump casing by applying a force to movable boundaries containing the fluid volume. Now let's see the classification of positive displacement pump. Positive displacement pumps are classified as rotary pumps and reciprocating pumps. A rotary pump, we have gear pump, load pump, sliding vein pump, screw pump. Reciprocating pumps are piston pumps, diaphragm pumps, plunger pumps, and pneumatic pumps. Now let's discuss briefly about rotary pumps and its application first. Gear pumps consist of two gears uh, which is placed in a housing with a small radial and clearance it is widely used in lubrication system. Low pumps uh, which consist of two lobes which can handle solid also it is used in paper pulp industry also it is used in food industry. Sliding vein or vein pump comprises of number of veins used for supplying pressurized oil in the hydraulic control system. Screw pumps uh, with housing is used, it can create high pressure and it is used to transfer lubricants. We have gear pump first. So let's see the components of gear pump. Gear pumps are divided into external gear pump and internal gear pumps. This is the diagram of external gear pump, which consists of a housing with uh, two identical gears which is mesh each other this is inlet and this is outlet at inlet fluid will be of low pressure which is pressurized as it passes to the small clearance between and the teeth and housing this is also the pathway of the fluid each gear is supported by a shaft with bearing on both sides of each gear so there will be a total of uh, four bearing and uh, it can withstand high pressure so it is used in high pressure application this is the exploded view of external gear external gear pump this is another photograph now let's see the working of external gear pump now let's discuss about internal gear pump internal gear pump consists of internal gear and an external gear this uh, external gear is rotating the gear creates a void as they come out of mesh and liquid flow into the pump uh, through this void into uh, the pump then you can see a crescent seal here the purpose of crescent seal is to uh, prevent from delivery area to suction area this is the diagram photographs of the internal gears. Now let's see the working of internal gear pump. It get into the teeth and it will get pressurized when it reaches the outlet port. See the purpose of uh, crescent C. It prevent the flow of the liquid from discharge port to inlet port. Second category of rotary pump is low pump. Low pump is similar to external gear pump but it has a major difference. There is no contact between the pumping elements or lobes. These are called as lobes. A low pump has at least two lobes, lobe 1 and lobe 2. Then, as we can see in the external gear pump, there is inlet and outlet. 
The major difference in the low pump is there is no external contact between these two. This contact is prevented by external timing gear. And the shaft of the low pump is driven independently. As there is no metal to metal contact, and also wherein abrasive application is minimal, it can be used in food application in food industry. Also, it can handle solids without damaging the pump. Now, let's see the photographs of uh, low pump. This is the low pump. Now let's see the working of rotary lobe pump. See lobe pump consists of two lobes which is independently driven. See as the water reaches here that is pressurized fluid will reaches here at that time there will be tight clearance between the two lobes so that this pressurized fluid will get forced into the discharge port. Third rotary pump is vein pump. Vein pump consists of a casing and also it is an eccentric casing. Also it has a rotor. On rotor we can see there are slots in which we can See number of sliding veins. This pumping action is caused by the expanding and contracting volumes contained in the rotor, vein, and the housing. You can see these. These are the vein sliding veins, and this sliding vein act as main sealing element between the suction and discharge port. These uh, veins are usually made up of non-metallic composite material. This pump work well with low viscosity liquid. These are the images of a vein pump. Now let's see the working of rotary vein pump. We can see uh, this is the rotor. Rotor consists of sliding veins. This is the sliding veins. Now let's see the working. It is this sliding vein which acts as the seal between inlet, inlet port and outlet port. Scroll pump is the fourth rotary pump. It consists of uh, inlet and outlet port, a housing, two spindle screws. Uh, one is uh, driven and the other is uh, driving spindle. This is driving spindle gear. Scroll pumps are used for high flow at relatively low pressure. It consists of uh, two Archimedes screws. In some scroll pump, there will be three screws, some other. There will be five screw. It is uh, depending upon the application. The number of screw will vary. The fluid causes the small clearance between the two screw, and it experiences a centrifugal force. This uh, combination of uh, suction pressure and centrifugal force that forces the fluid up, and uh, it goes out to the outlet port. Now let's see images of uh, screw pump. This is uh, a tin screw screw pump. Now let's see the working of rotary screw pump, which consists of a main spindle screw and which drives the two other screw. Water enters from this inlet side. It will pass through the two small clearance between the screws and as it reaches the outlet side it will get pressurized. Uh, 
Our functions. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share my channel, Mechanical Classroom. Also, press bell button so that you won't miss newly uploaded videos.